Good morning, dear students. Uh, today we are starting a chapter. Its name is Magnetism. And uh, the course we are studying is Physics 5054. Let's move to the first slide. And okay. So in this chapter, we will be studying about magnets. And you must have seen magnets uh, in your daily life. You must have seen those magnets with which you put the things on the doors of your fridge. You must have seen the magnets with which, uh, 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 which are used in the motors, uh, the high toy cars. If you open them, you will see those magnets. And we will start this chapter. And this is all about magnets, that how the magnets are made and what basically happens inside the magnets. So let's, let's start. Here we go. So you must have heard about the magnets in your every science lessons, in your previous science lessons. And at your home, you must have seen magnets. So you have heard about uh, the most important thing about the magnets you must have experienced, that magnet has a power uh, to attract some objects. And uh, for example, the magnet has the power to attract the, the piece pieces of iron. So magnet is a material which has the ability to attract iron. So one of the fundamental property of matter is magnetism. So, you know, the one concept about the magnetism is that the magnetism comes from the motion of charged particles. You see, this is a, uh, a weird concept, you know, because uh, we are starting this chapter and the first thing coming in your way is that why the things have magnetism. We have a theory about this, that whenever the charged particles, you know, the positive charges or the negative charges, when they will be moving, then around them naturally, a magnetism is created and when magnetism is created it has the ability to attract the most common name the material which is attracted to a magnet we know is iron we have steel we have cobalt and we also have nickel so why is something will become a magnet the reason is in its atomic structure that why something becomes a magnet. The reason is in its um, atomic structure. You know, in an atom, you know, in an atom, um, we have positive charge and we have negative charge. And the electrons, uh, they are orbiting the nucleus and the positive charge in, in, is inside the nucleus. And uh, we also have the concept that uh, the electrons, they are spinning on their axis and plus they are also rotating in the orbits around the nucleus. And so these are charged particles and they are moving. So when these charged particles are moving around them, uh, magnetism is created, magnetic field is actually created. And what happens that in a material, so every electron has its magnetic field it has its magnetism. And if all the particles, all the electrons, sorry, in a material, the magnetism around their spinning electrons is in such a way 
that all the magnetic fields have the same direction, the thing will be a magnet. For example, if you look at this diagram, here we have shown the magnetic fields of individual charged particles, the magnetic field produced by an individual charged particle, we have represented with an arrow. Here you can see in this diagram, the, this, is a, this arrow represents basically a magnetic field produced by a charged particle. The next arrow also represents a magnetic field produced by a charged particle. So if in a material, the most of the charged particles, the magnetic field produced around them in such a way that they all are aligned with each other, or most of them are aligned with each other, with each other. they are aligned in the same direction, the material will be a magnet. These arrows, which shows the individual magnetic fields, we call them magnetic domains. So if in a, in a, in a substance or in a body, if the individual domains are aligned with each other, the thing will be a magnet. It will act like a big magnet. For example, if you look at this diagram, here the magnetic domains, it has magnetic domains, it has its charged particles, they are spinning, they are moving around, they have their individual magnetic fields, but because these magnetic fields are not aligned with each other, they are randomly directed, so what happens that they cancel out each other. So the thing will be unmagnetized, it's not magnetized. So if the domains of our material, they are aligned with each other, you call it a magnet. And if domains are present in everything, but if the magnetic domains are not aligned with each other, we will say it's magnet, it's not magnetized. Okay, so, so that's the reason, uh, you know, uh, that why uh, few things are magnet, uh, mag magnetized and few things cannot be magnetized and few things are not magnetized but they can be magnetized. Is It all depends upon the magnetic domains. If the thing has already, its magnetic domains are already aligned with each other, most of them are aligned with each other, we will say it's, it's magnetized. And if they are randomly directed, they are not aligned with each other, we will say it's uh, unmagnetized. And if by some magic or by some process or by some cadabra, cadabra, you can align the magnetic domains, we call it a magnetic material. Okay, so if all the magnetic domains, again, you can see in this diagram, if all the magnetic domains uh, are lined up, so we will say this whole thing will act like a, a proper magnet, okay? If you cannot do this, or if you have a magnetic material and you uh, do something with it and it loses, lose its, uh, uh, alignment of the domains, you say that it has lost its magnetism or it is not magnetized. Okay. You know, um, one basic idea we want to uh, tell you is that the, the, mag the magnetic properties or magnetic field is, is, is being born from the movement of charges. And uh, so the idea of uh, magnetism and electricity, they go side by side. We will, we will study three chapters on it, you, you will see. 
so this idea that the magnetism is basically due to the movement of the charge particles uh, that idea uh, we will in the next chapter we will also study that by the movement of the charge particles you can create magnetism and by the magnetism you can create the movement of the charge particles so they go side by side so by the movement of charged particles you can create magnetism by the magnetism you can create the movement of charged particles means by the electricity you can make uh, magnets and by the magnets you can make electricity so you know in the charged particles we have studied that there are two kinds of charges uh, positive charges negative charges we have also studied in the last four chapters we have studied that the charged particles um they also have uh, electric field around them and uh, those electric fields are normally represented with the imaginary lines we call them electric field lines and we have studied that uh, from the positive charge the electric field lines are spreading out and in the negative charge all the electric field lines are going into the negative charge so so this idea in the electricity we have studied that the charge particles they are two kinds positive charges negative charges uh the electric field around the charge and we have electric field lines by which we represent the electric field and those electric field lines they come out of the positive charge and they go into the negative charge in the same way every magnet has two poles and uh, those poles uh, like the charges positive negative charge the same way in a magnet we have two poles and one pole is called south pole and the other one is called the north pole and uh, you know the magnet has very strong force and you can experience that force you must have experienced that force if you take a piece of iron and you bring it near a magnet you will see that the piece of iron will be attracted to the magnet or if when you take another magnet bring it near to another magnet you will observe that there will be an invisible force when you bring a magnet near a magnet there might be they might attract each other or they might repel each other so we have uh, in this in the same way you see like the electric field we have magnetic field and we have magnetic field lines so magnetic field is represented with the magnetic field lines so you have north pole you have south pole like a positive charge north pole is like the positive charge and from the north pole the magnetic field lines they come out you can see in this diagram also here we have represented these lines are representing basically magnetic field lines you can see the magnetic field lines they are coming out of this north pole and here we have this south pole the magnetic uh, south pole of the magnet is like a negative charge and uh, Uh, in, uh, in the sense of the the direction of the magnetic field lines the magnetic field lines go into the south pole so from north pole the magnetic field lines these are imaginary lines they are used to uh, describe or represent some magnetic field so from north pole the magnetic lines come out and in the south pole the magnetic lines go in okay so when we talk about uh, magnetic uh, uh, field lines and magnetic field around a magnet so one way of uh, if you want to look at that how the magnetic field lines they look like one very simple experiment we have take a take a white paper and uh, with the help of uh, of a tape uh, fix it on a on a flat table and put a bar magnet this shape magnet is called a bar magnet and put it on that paper and 
and then take some uh, iron uh, filings and or some people call it fillings iron filings and they are very small small pieces of iron and sprinkle them sprinkle them over the paper and uh, iron filings sprinkle or fillings sprinkle them on the paper and then gently tap the table a little bit gently tap the table and then you will observe this pattern you will observe this pattern and this basically is representing these imaginary lines these imaginary lines are called magnetic field lines and we have already studied that these magnetic lines are coming out of this knot and they are going into the sub you see they are going into the sub so you see uh, they have some properties for example if um, the points where the magnetic field lines are very close to each other the area where the magnetic field lines are very close to each other in that area the magnetic field will be very strong and where you see distance between the magnetic lines the they are more separated from each other there the magnetic field will be weak so if you look at this figure you will see here in this area the magnetic field lines and in this area the magnetic field lines are very close to each other so in this area the magnetic field will be very strong and if you look at this area the magnetic field lines are separated from each other there is little space between them in this area the distance between the magnetic lines is larger than here so here the magnetic field will be weak so from this diagram we can confirm that the magnetic field will be very strong near the north pole here on this end of the bar magnet and it will be very strong on this end of the bar magnet and on these sides the magnetic field will be little weaker as compared to the ends of the bar magnet so if you look at here in this diagram even you will observe that on the ends here on this end which is the north pole and on this end which is the south pole there are a lot of the amount of the iron filings is is quite uh, large and on these sides here here the amount of the iron filings is less so here it shows that here the magnetic field is very strong here the magnetic field is very strong but on these sides the magnetic field is weaker i hope that you have understood this okay so another property of the uh, bar magnets is that or any other kind of magnet if you suspend them freely in the air so what will happen they will always align themselves they will always align themselves in a certain direction so for example if you take a retort stand the stand is called a retort stand and with the help of a thread i have tied a bar magnet with this thread and this hanging here with this stand and it's free give it a little twist and let's wait and you will observe that every time you give it a twist it will always 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 when it will stop twisting and it will be aligned always in the same direction and that direction will be the north south of the earth so that's a remarkable uh, property of the magnets and due to this uh, property of the magnets Uh, we use the magnets for the navigation purpose you know if you are in in a desert or you are in a sea you can use this uh, magnet to find your way 
because the magnet will always align itself with the north south of the earth so whenever you give it a spin it will always stop in the north south the north south direction of the earth so in this diagram uh, this is shown another uh, very good example sometimes they ask you to write i have seen that question in the atp paper and sometimes in theory paper also they say that uh, uh, um, use some instruments or some material and uh, do this in the water do the same thing in the water so how we do that we take a piece of uh, styrofoam you know styrofoam you have cups of styrofoam the packing material which we use take a small piece of styrofoam and take a bar magnet and put the bar magnet on the styrofoam and gently put it in a tub of water take a tub of water tub of water and put the styrofoam piece gently with a bar magnet on it put styrofoam piece gently in the tub of water so now this styrofoam piece uh, with the bar magnet on top of it will be floating in the tub so give it a little uh, rotation and it will start rotating in the tub and when it will stop rotating then the sit and see when it will stop rotating do your amazement it will be it will also always stop in the north south direction that bar magnet that magnet sitting on a styrofoam floating in a tub when it will stop rotating it will stop in the north south direction of the earth it will always happen and that's why it is being used uh, that uh, thing is used for navigation the instrument we use for navigation we have modern instrument little bit engineering is done the basic concept is same but little after little bit engineering is done and technology is put into the use and we get the magnetic compass you must have seen magnetic compass okay so another very important property is the law of magnetism and uh, the property that uh, you know the bar magnet has uh, two poles uh, north pole south pole and if you bring two uh, magnets together and you bring for example their same pole for example you bring south pole in front of a south pole they will repel each other and if for example if you bring a north pole facing an, another bar magnet north pole they will repel each other so the like like poles they always repel each other and if you bring opposite poles uh, facing each other they will attract each other for example if you bring a south pole and a north pole facing each other what will happen they will attract each other so like poles they repel each other and unlike poles opposite poles they attract each other so the north and north will repel south and south will repel north and south will attract okay okay so here we are going to do uh, to whatever we have said that like poles attract each other we can perform a little experiment and in this experiment you know we have hung a bar magnet and with the help of a thread with a retort span and near this is north pole i have another bar magnet i'm holding it in my hand and the bar magnet b is not is brought near the bar magnet a and when you will bring the north near the north they will repel each other so the a bar magnet the bar magnet a which is hanging with a thread it will start rotating anti clockwise okay so it will start rotating anti clockwise because you know the north and north are repelling each other so it's an experiment sometimes you have to write this here another experiment in this experiment we are done we have done the same thing we have taken a bar magnet we have tied it with a thread 
and it's hanging with a retort stand and I'm calling it a bar magnet A and I have another bar magnet in my hand and for example its south pole is now towards the north pole of the A. So now this opposite poles are attract, uh, facing each other so they will have attraction. So if I will bring the south of the B near the north of the A, the hanging bar magnet A, bar magnet A, it will start rotating in a, it will be attracted to the south of the B. So it will start rotating in a uh, anti-clockwise manner or it will be attracted to the south of the B. The north of the A will be attracted to the south of the B. So these are two uh, simple experiments you can perform at your home or in your school to see that the like poles, they repel each other and the opposite poles, they attract each other. I hope that you are understanding this idea. And let's move to the next thing. Okay, so there are some uh, mag materials uh, which are attracted to the magnet and the materials which are attracted to the magnet we call them magnetic materials and the materials which are not attracted to the magnets and they are called non-magnetic materials so the famous magnetic materials are iron steel cobalt and nickel remember these names because sometimes they give you questions in which you have to pick that which one is a magnetic material. So these names, remember these names. And, uh, and another very important point is that, you know, how, you, for example, you have a piece of iron. Piece of iron itself is not a magnet. And, but you have a bar magnet. When you will bring a bar magnet near a piece of iron, it will be attracted to the bar magnet. So, so iron is a magnetic material because it is attracted to a magnet. But, you know, if I have an other magnet and if I bring it near the bar magnet, what will happen? It will be also attracted. So, how to distinguish between a magnetic material and a magnetized material? or a material which is already a magnet. You see the attraction, attraction is uh, not a confirmed test uh, to conclude that something is magnetized. Attraction is not the confirmed test for the something to be magnetized. For example, if I have a bar magnet and I have a, another, another rod, and we don't know it's magnetized or it's not magnetized. So if you bring that unknown rod near the bar magnet, and if it is attracted, you cannot say that the rod is, um, is magnetized. It, is, it, it, is, might, it might be attracted because it is iron. But you know, the confirmed test of uh, something to be magnetized is repulsion. For example, for example, if the if you have a bar magnet and uh, you have an unknown rod, let's say if you bring the side A of the unknown rod near the north pole of the bar magnet and it is attracted. Now wait, patient T. Now bring the other end of the rod to the north of the bar magnet. If the other end is also attracted to the north, it means both ends of that unknown rod are attracted to the north. It means it is not a magnet. It is simply maybe iron, maybe steel, maybe nickel, maybe cobalt. It's not magnetized. It is only a magnetic material. If it is, its one end is attracted to the north and the other end of that rod is repelled by the north, repulsion is the confirmed test. If its one end is repelled by one of the poles of a magnet, then we will say 
the other rod is also magnetized. So if you are trying to find out that some other rod, some unknown rod is magnetized or is not magnetized, you will not uh, announce your uh, judgment if you see that it is attracted. No, you will only be uh, able to decide that it's magnetized or it's not magnetized if it's, if it's magnetized if it is repelled by one of the poles of the known magnet if it is repelled by one of the poles of a magnet then it is definitely also magnetized so when sometimes they ask you to decide whether the rod b is magnetized or not magnetized or if they ask you okay we have a steel rod and one of my friends gave it to me and told me that it is magnetized now, how you will confirm that it's magnetized? If it's one end is brought to the north pole of a known magnet, and it is if it is attracted, then I will take that end to the south pole of that known magnet. And if it is repelled, when it is repelled, then I came to know that it's a magnetized material. If it's attracted to both north and the south of the known magnet, then it's only a magnetic material. So, you see, uh, if you bring, uh, if you have two magnets and they will have force of attraction and they might have a force of repulsion and the force of attraction and the force of repulsion also depends upon the distance between the magnets. And if they are close to each other, the force of attraction or force of repulsion will be larger. If the distance between the magnets is larger, the, the force of attraction or force of repulsion will become weaker. Okay. So, another very important thing about uh, uh, magnets, another property of the magnets, is that magnets are always bipolar. They have two poles, always, always they have two poles. If you have a big magnet, for example, like here, here I have a magnet, north pole, south pole, every magnet has always two poles. And if uh, some naughty thoughts come in your mind and you say, okay, let's break it. You make it two pieces. Now these two small pieces, they will have their own north, their south, their north, their south. So you can break a magnet into smaller pieces, into smaller and further smaller and further smaller pieces. No matter how small you break a magnet, no matter how small pieces you make, that of the magnet, the magnet will always have a north and a south. No matter how small or how tiny, tiny the magnet becomes, it will always have two poles in it, north pole, south pole. So it's a property of magnets that the magnets always, always, always have two poles in it, no matter how small the magnet is. And uh, that is not in the case of the electric charges. You can separate a positive charge and you can separate a negative charge. So in, in the real life, you can have uh, an isolated negative charge. In the real life, you can have an isolated positive charge. But this is not the case with the magnets. This is not possible that you break the magnet, make it smaller, 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 smaller bring a surgical knife and cut it smaller, 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 and you get a magnet who has only one pole. That's not possible. Magnets always have two poles in them. So they are always bipolar. This is the property of the magnets. Okay, I hope you have understood this property. Okay, so this word, the earth, and you know the earth has uh, earth has its own magnetic field and it feels like that the uh, uh, earth has a very very big magnet inside so earth has its own magnetic field so whenever you take a compass remember it's, it's, it's a little confusing thing which i will try to tell you and uh, you know here what we call here, here we always say we have the North Pole. And here, what we call, we have the South Pole of the Earth. 
so this is what you have been studying all your life like that we have here the north pole we have here the south pole above here we have the north pole this is what we have we have studied and here we have north pole. Uh, here we have the south pole sort but if you take a magnet and the magnets if you have a magnetic compass this north will be always pointing in this direction this north will be always pointing in this direction you know wherever the compass the needle of the compass wherever the needle of the compass points that needle actually represents what is the direction of the magnetic field so for example if you put a compass here if i put a compass here and the compass points in this direction it means that the magnetic lines are going in this direction so if the magnetic lines are going in this direction so basically here we have basically here we have a south pole okay so but we call it a north pole and this is called a south pole don't get confused uh, let's move to the next one okay so what are the magnetic uh, materials uh, magnetic materials can be made into magnets magnetic materials are whose domains are not aligned by but by putting them near another magnet or by applying dc electricity to them uh, we can align their domains we can uh, line up uh, their domains in the same direction so they will also start behaving like a magnet so for the famous example of the magnetic materials are steel iron nickel cobalt and many alloys of these metals non magnetic materials are those uh, materials whose magnetic domains we cannot align we try very hard and we apply magnets we apply dc current whatever you do but you will not be able to succeed in aligning their magnetic domains so what will happen you cannot turn them into a magnet and the famous materials which are non magnetic are wood glass plastic and metals such as copper and brass remember these names copper and brass they are non magnetic material they are not attracted to magnet or neither you can magnetize them okay so uh, when you bring a magnetic material near uh, another uh, near a permanent magnet or near a magnet what happens um, that magnetic material also becomes a magnet maybe for 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 temporary basis it also starts behaving like a magnet for example for example suppose here i have a magnet and here is north pole south pole and in my other hand i am bringing this nail here to this north pole so immediately when this uh, nail will be it's not important that uh, it's not necessary that this nail should touch this north pole but when you will bring it near this north pole this nail is made of iron so what ha will happen that on this side of the iron the, on, the, on the head of the nail this will become a south and this end will become a north so you see this nail which is made of iron has not touched this uh, bar magnet or if you will touch there is no problem but when it's become near this uh, bar or permanent magnet what happen on this magnetic material on this iron nail uh, for temporary basis magnetic poles are created so you see this nail becomes a magnet because you bring it near you bring it inside the magnetic field of a permanent magnet or a magnet so the, or this has also also become a magnet for for, for, for temporary time for for some time 
as as long as, as it is in the vicinity of that bar magnet this nail will also be behaves like a magnet it will have its north pole it will have its south pole it will have its magnetic line which will be coming out of the north going into the south and this nail will start behaving like a, a bar magnet and let's say we have another an other uh, nail this second nail and when this second nail which is made of the uh, iron when it comes near this uh, nail because now this nail is acting like a magnet and due to the presence of this this nail will also become uh, a, a, a magnet and it will start behaving like a magnet so here it will have south pole it will be have north pole this this north and this south they will start attracting each other so when they will attract each other this nail might be uh, uh, hang with this nail due to the attraction because of uh, the attraction of this north and this south so this is called magnetic induction you see you have a magnetic material you brought it near a magnet and that magnetic material also starts behaving like a magnet and it will continue behaving like a magnet uh, until uh, till the time you have that bar magnet there but when you will take that bar magnet away this iron nail it will be no more a magnet it will lose its north and south pole and this will also lose its north and south so this second nail will drop down when you will remove the magnet from here so you see magnetic induction is one of the ways making magnetic materials like steel and iron into magnets in other words magnetic induction is a process suppose were induced so this was magnetic induction due to magnetic induction and due to the magnetic induction this also as south south and north pole so this and this the north and south they attracted and this was attracted to this so that's the reason that why you uh, that when you bring a uh, magnetic material near a magnet and due to magnetic induction what happens the poles are induced on that magnetic material so if you bring that magnetic material near the north pole so the end of that magnetic material which is near the north will become south so this north and this south will attract so so that magnetic tail will be attracted to the north pole there you know this north and the north of that magnetic material they are repelling each other but you know the distance between them is more than the distance between this north and south so the attraction here is larger than the repulsion between this north and this north so because the attraction is larger than the repulsion of north and north so that's why basically the attraction will take place so if you remove this bar magnet this will lose its north and south it will it will lose its magnetism and this will also lose its, lose its magnetism so this nail which was before attracted to this nail it will be no more attracted and it will fall on the ground i hope that you have understood this idea okay let's move to the next to the next slide okay this is not moving okay let me show okay okay so here we have the next slide here again you can see we have a bar magnet and it's a permanent magnet we have a bar magnet and here i brought a nail this nail was not basically a magnet but it was a magnetic material so immediately what will happen on the head of this nail a south is created and on the on this side north is created and then i brought a second nail and due to magnetic induction this side will become this end will become south this end will become north then we brought a third nail here and the same thing happened here and here and that's why you know due to the magnetic induction these mag uh, magnetic material these nails are not basically magnets they are made of magnetic material iron and due to the poles on them so you see here we have the opposite pole north and south so they are attracting so this north and south they are attracting this north and south they are attracting so this we have this uh, long chain of uh, nails which is hanging with the north of this uh, uh, this uh, north of the permanent magnet so 
this method involves simply placing the magnetic material soft iron close to a strong magnet without touching. Here we have shown touching, but even without touching, if when this is near, just near this north or the south pole, the poles will be induced in the nail of the iron. Okay. So it's very simple. It's an example of uh, induced magnetism. I hope that you have understood. Okay. So I hope that uh, uh, till now I have explained you that why those magnetic materials, they are attracted to the magnets. The reason was that when you bring that magnetic material near the magnet, or when that magnetic field touch the magnet or it comes near the magnet what happens the, on the magnetic material and uh, due to magnetic inductions the poles are induced and the side of the material which is near the north for example if you brought the uh, the magnetic material near the north pole so the the, the end of the pole, uh, end of the magnetic material which is near the north will become south. So that south and the north of the bar magnet, they will attract each other. So it's a temporary process uh, when you will uh, take away the magnetic material from the, the permanent magnet, the magnetic material will lose its magnetism. It will lose its north and south and it will become normal magnetic, uh, normal iron they will not uh, be behaving like magnets and when you will take them away from the bar magnets. Okay, so in in our uh, course, we have some methods uh, by which you can convert the some materials into a into a permanent magnet or into a temporary magnet also. And the first method we are studying is stroking method. In the stroking method, for example, the material we are using here is steel bar. The materials which are made of steel. So here you can see I have taken a bar of steel. It's a steel bar. And what I have done here, I have taken a bar magnet, which is a permanent magnet. And I am rubbing, I will touch on this end, the north pole of the bar magnet. And I will stroke in this side and then i will pick the magnet and then again i will bring the north here on this right end and i will touch the north uh, on this steel bar and i will rub it against this steel bar and i will pick it up again and i will again put the north here and rub it like this and i will pick up the bar magnet and then i will do I will touch on this side the knot and I will rub this knot in this direction and I will pick it up. So you see, um, by doing so, you do it again and again and again. And after some time, you will came to know that this steel bar will also become, and this steel bar will also become a magnet. So um, one precaution which you have to take for example, if you are using the north, so you will, and you are stroking in this direction from right to left. So all the time, every stroke, uh, you will do it with the north, the north pole, and you will move in this direction. And then you will pick the mag bar magnet up. And then again, you will put the north here and you will stroke in this so you cannot do this like this that you first you stroke it with the north and you are, then you stroke it with the south and then you stroke it with the north no if you started doing it with the south then you will you will stroke with the south and if you have done started doing it with the north then you will stroke it with the north only okay i hope that you have understood this here we have a, a more detailed diagram for example here what i am doing I have a piece of iron rod and what I'm doing, I'm stroking in this direction now. And I'm using the north pole, north pole of this bar magnet. And this is a piece of iron rod, which is not a basically a magnet. So what I, I touch the north here of the bar magnet on this left hand of the steel 
iron rod and i stroke in this direction then i pick up the bar iron uh, the magnetic bar and then i again touch the knot on the this end and i rub the knot and i stroke the knot if towards the right side and again i pick it up and then again i touch the knot on this end and i rub the or, or stroke the knot it should be touching in this direction so when you are doing this if you are doing it with the knot so what will happen this if you are stroking the knot in this way so what will happen an opposite pole will appear here here the south will be created and here the north will be created if you if for example you have been doing this with the help of uh, a south pole and you doing the same strokes with the help of for example the south is here what will happen a north pole will be induced here and a south pole will be induced here i hope that you have understood okay here in this diagram you can see i am using two uh, two uh, bar magnets and i am stroking this iron rod and the one precaution i'm taking i'm using the north of this and south of this north i'm stroking in towards the right and with the south i'm stroking towards the left so what will happen due to the this the south and south pole i'm stroking towards the left so this will become a north and with this north i'm stroking to the right so this will become a south pole i hope that you have understood okay and we have also a electrical method of uh, magnetizing uh, iron rods or uh, or you can see steel rods or even we can uh, magnetize a solenoid so so very simple try to understand i use the word solenoid so don't get confused with this word i will explain what is the solenoid mean so what we, what you can do uh, you can take a a wire a copper wire and what you can do that you can make a spiral with the help of the copper wire you know like a spring you can make a spiral with the help of the copper wire and then you can connect the copper wire with a dc power supply mark my words dc power supply because we are trying to make a electromagnet with the electrical method we will try to make a a magnet so so, so the the magnet which will be formed there we call it electromagnet so close this switch and the current will start flowing when the current will start flowing in and and this spiral of the copper wire this is called a this is called a solenoid so sometimes we just make the spiral and sometimes what we do we put a rod of iron we put a rod of iron here and on that rod rod of iron we make this uh, we bind this copper wire around this rod of iron or rod of steel and that helps to give us a frame and a shape and then we connect it with the dc power supply and when we close the switch the current start flowing and we are in this chapter and in the next chapters and in your course syllabus the current we consider is conventional current and conventional current means that the current flows from the positive terminal of the battery towards the negative terminal so the current is flowing in this direction so the current is going in this direction and from here it's going back so what will happen that this solenoid it will be behaving like a bar magnet so this solenoid will be behaving like a bar magnet one of its end will be behaving like a north pole and one of its uh, ends will be behaving like a south pole and this solenoid will keep on behaving like a bar magnet a permanent magnet it will behave like a bar magnet or a permanent like the permanent magnet behaves it will have its north pole it will have its south pole it will have magnetic lines which will be coming out of the north pole and they will be going towards the south pole so because uh, this uh, magnet uh, this magnetic field these magnetic lines they are due to the dc current we call it a electromagnet 
and the strength of this electromagnet you know the strength of the electromagnet depends upon uh, the amount of current flowing through it through the coil uh, through the solenoid if you will increase the uh, amount of current flowing in this solenoid this electromagnet will become stronger if you reduce the amount of current flowing through this the this solenoid will become a weak electromagnet and another thing is that uh, you see this number of turns the number of turns of the coil if you increase the number of turns per unit length remember these words if you want to make a stronger electromagnet you will here for example how many turns i have one two three four five six seven eight nine so for example i have nine turns here uh, if you increase the number of turns in this length here we have nine turns make it 18 if you will double the number of turns the magnetic field will also become stubborn so then the more the number of turns per unit length the stronger will be the electromagnet more the amount of current the stronger will be the electromagnet and uh, another very important thing if i reverse if i reverse the direction of the current how i can reverse the direction of the current if i reverse the polarity of the battery here for example the positive terminal is here the negative terminal is here if i reverse this battery or in other words if i reverse the direction of the current what will happen the polarity of this electromagnet the poles of this electromagnet they will also reverse for example when the current is flowing in this direction when the positive is here the current is flowing in this direction the north is here the south is here if i reverse the direction of the current if i reverse the direction of the of the battery the direction of the current will reverse the polarity of this electromagnet will also change then here I will have the north and here I will have the south. I hope that uh, these points are clear to you. Let's move to the next thing. Here we have shown again that uh, um, here we have a nail, an iron nail. And on the iron nail, we have wound a, a copper wire. And this copper wire, remember this copper wire, this copper wire has a lamination on it. It's electrically insulated from, uh, from each other and from the iron. This copper wire is not naked. It has insulation, it has a lamination on it, lamination coating. And when you connect it with the battery, this iron nail, this whole thing will start behaving like an electromagnet. So when you put an iron nail in this solenoid, this, without this iron nail, this solenoid will definitely become electromagnet, but that electromagnet will be relatively weaker. And with this, everything the same, only you just insert an iron nail. So what will happen? This electromagnet will become stronger. Okay, this will become a stronger electro magnet so if you put a steel bar instead of the iron nail what happened that the steel bar has it becomes a, a permanent magnet you know the steel is a material when you pass the pass the steel by this process that you put it in a uh, in a solenoid and you pass dc current and what will happen that the steel will become uh, such a magnet that when you will switch off the current, the steel will still be a magnet. You know, in the case of iron, you know what happens when you cut off the current, the iron reduces, uh, it loses its magnetism. But in the case of the steel, you know what happens? Um, the steel, when you switch off the current, the steel will not lose its magnetism. That's why we say that the steel is a hard magnetic material. Because once it's magnetized, it retains its magnetic properties for a longer time. So when you will cut off by this process, when you make them electromagnets, if you have an iron nail, 
when you cut off the current supply, the iron will lose its magnetism immediately. But if you have a steel nail and you cut off the current, the steel will not lose its magnetism. It will retain its magnetic properties for a very long time. So that's why we call that the steel is a hard magnetic material, whereas the iron is a soft magnetic material. I hope that you have understood this point. Okay, so here we have a, a table which is uh, uh, electromagnets and prominent magnets. Electromagnets, you, you know, they are the magnets and when you are providing them with the DC current, the thing behaves like a magnet, but when you cut off the DC current, it loses its magnetism. But permanent magnets are all the time, they are evergreen magnetisms. They, they remain magnets for a very long time. So electromagnets made of coil of wire, often with a soft iron core. Iron core, that it means that you have a solenoid, and in the solenoid, you have put a rod of iron or a nail of iron. So it has an iron core. Permanent magnets, mostly the permanent magnets are made from steel, made of hard magnetic materials like steel. Whereas electromagnets, they are normally made of the soft uh, magnetic material. Magnetism is temporary, requires the current through the coil to sustain the magnetic field strength. Whereas the permanent magnets, magnetism is permanent, does not require any electric current to retain magnetic field strength. Application telephone receivers, electric relays, electric bell circuit breakers. We will study them in the next chapter. Applications uh, in the magnetic door steps, compasses, motors. In motors, if you have uh, interest in motors, you must have your remote control cars and remote controls, helicopters. You can open them, you will find uh, in them motors. If you open those motors, you will find permanent magnets. The magnetic compass which is used for navigation, it also has permanent magnets. And uh, you know those magnets which we use for to put the bills on the on annual report cards also on the fridge and uh, on the door of the fridge we use permanent magnets. Magnetic door stops are also used and uh, okay Let's see. So here we come to another, another discussion. That discussion is that if, for example, you have a magnet and you want to demagnetize it. So the methods are very simple. Demagnetization is simple. There are three basic, uh, there are basically four things which we can use to do the demagnetization. If you have a magnet and you want it to lose its magnetism, so how you can do that? You can do the heating. Take the magnet and uh, take a Bunsen burner or a candle or uh, any kind of flame and put that permanent magnet on that flame. So keep it heating for some time and after some time you will observe that it has lost its magnetism. Another way of uh, doing the demagnetization is take the permanent magnet and hammer it. With the help of the hammers, strike it with the hammers many many times and after some strikes you will observe that the magnet has become weaker keep it doing keep on doing the hammering and after some time you will observe that the magnet has lost its all magnetism so this is also stroking heating or we call it hammering hammering stroking or hammering and another way of the demagnetizing is take the magnet and drop it again and again on the ground. Pick it up and drop it on the ground. Pick it up and drop it on the ground. And when you will do it many times, uh, after some time you will observe that the magnet has lost its magnetism. So these are the three demagnetization methods. Another demagnetizing method is very simple. You see, now remember these words that for demagnetization we use alternating current. For demagnetization, we use alternating current. So, where I have a solenoid and take a, uh, we have a solenoid and put the solenoid in the east west direction. And what you do, you put the permanent magnet in the solenoid and you, with the help of the supply and the alternating power supply, supply the current to the solenoid and then 
then very gently and slowly remove the permanent magnet from that solenoid in the east west direction and or west east direction so what will happen it will lose its magnetism another way of doing this is just put the uh, the magnet permanent magnet in the solenoid and give it alternating current in the solenoid and then gradually reduce the alternating current and when you will make the current zero gradually reduce the current and at the end when you will take out that permanent magnet you will observe that it has lost its magnetism so this uh, method of uh, of demagnetization this is electrical method of demagnetizing very important and you can read its details in your textbook okay so and but the two things you should remember for magnetization in our course we use dc current for d demagnetization we use alternating current okay so so what is the magnetic field if you have a magnet and around that magnet the space or the region around that magnet uh, in which an other magnet can feel the force of attraction or force of repulsion due to this magnet so that area that region that space around this magnet in which another magnet will uh, feel force of attraction or repulsion experience of force that area or that region or that space is called magnetic field magnetic field graphically is represented by imaginary lines and here you can see in this diagram also we have represented the imaginary lines and the imaginary lines they come out of the north pole and they go into the south pole so from north pole they are coming out and from the south pole they are going in so due to uh, this you know and uh, okay so once again we were disconnected and i am back again from we were on this slide and you can see these blue lines they are representing the magnetic field lines and they come out of the north pole in the air they go from north to south and inside the magnet they grow from south to north but outside the magnet they go from north to south so these arrows they are basically telling you the direction of the magnetic field lines and where the magnetic field lines they are close to each other the magnetic field lines are very uh, magnetic field is very strong there okay so here we go again we have uh, here we have some points uh, magnetic field is a vector quantity it has magnitude and it has also has a direction so where the magnetic field lines are close to each other the magnetic field is very strong and the magnetic field lines the arrows of the magnetic field lines they show you the direction the direction is from the north to south and magnetic lines they never cross each other remember this word they never cross each other here we have in this diagram we have tried to show you some uh, how the magnetic field lines are for example we have taken a single bar magnet and you can see that from the north the magnetic lines are coming out and in the air they go towards the south and from north they are coming out and they are going to the north uh, to the south pole here you can see we have two magnets placed facing each other and here we have north pole the south pole of this bar magnet and they will definitely attract each other and the lines which are coming out of this north pole they will find a very easy and nearby south here so they will start going into this south some will be going into this south also but most of them will start going into this south due to this they will be attracted so here i have shown you that a north and a north is facing each other when a north and north is facing each other basically what happens uh, the magnetic lines coming out of this this north they will go out and the north from here they are magnetic lines coming out 
So because we have learned that the magnetic lines do not cross each other, so what will happen? They try to avoid each other. So due to this, here a region is created where there is no magnetic lines. So this is called a neutral point. Here in this region, there are no magnetic lines. So there are no magnetic fields, no magnetic lines. So this region is called, this point where there are, there are no magnetic lines, this is called a neutral point. Oh, okay. So here we have a magnetic compass. Magnetic compass is a simple magnet and is, it is pivoted on a, on a tip of a needle and it is free to rotate. And we know that the normally what happens, the, the magnetic compass needle, it will align itself always in the north-south of the... But if there is a bar magnet near or a strong magnet near or any other magnet near, what will happen then it will not be showing us the real north and south of the earth. It will start following the electric field of that magnet. For example, here, here in this diagram, you can see they are, here we have a magnet and I have placed that magnet on a paper and you can see I have put the uh, compass, compasses on different locations around and every location you see this red tip of the magnetic compass that is showing the direction of the magnetic field line. So here the magnetic field lines are going in this direction. Here the magnetic lines are going in this direction. Here the magnetic lines are going in this direction. Here the magnetic lines are going in this direction. Here the magnetic lines or you can say magnetic pole field is going in this direction. Here the magnetic field is going. This. So the magnetic compass is used to, uh, it will always align itself according to the magnetic field lines there. So wherever this red tip of the magnetic compass is pointing, it is actually telling you the magnetic lines which are uh, flowing from here, they are going in this direction. So actually the needle of the magnetic compass always align itself with the magnetic lines in that area. Okay, so here we have a uh, um, how we can plot the magnetic field lines around a, uh, of a bar magnet. So the procedure is very simple. What we do, we take a paper, we paste it on a, on, a, on a flat table. And what we do, we put a bar magnet on that paper and we mark the boundary of the bar magnet. We also write in that boundary, where is the North Pole, where is the South Pole. And then what we do, we take a compass we take a very small compass magnetic compass and we put it near the north pole and wherever the wherever the uh, camp uh, the needle of that compass points we put a dot on the on the head of that uh, needle and on, on the paper and wherever the arrow or, or the sorry the back of that uh, uh, needle is pointing we put a dot here for example let me call it the the dot which I put on the on the, the tail of the of the needle, I call it A point, and on the the point or the dot I put on the paper, which was showing that the the, the arrow or the head of the needle, let me call it B. Then I take the compass and I put the compass uh, in such a way that the tail of that uh, on the back side of that needle is uh, coinciding with the dot B and wherever the needle of the compass will point, I will, I will, I will put a dot on the paper and I, I will call it C. And I will keep on doing this process until I reach from North Pole to the South Pole. And then what I will do, I will join those dots with each other and I will get a magnetic field line starting from the North Pole and reaching to the South Pole. And I will then start again from another location near the North Pole and I will continue this putting dots until I reach the South Pole and I will join those dots with the, with the line. So this is how we will, we will be able to draw uh, magnetic field lines around the bar magnet with the help of a magnetic compass, paper, pencil. Okay, so this procedure is very important. This is also written in your textbook and you should be able to write this procedure. 
this comes in theory paper sometimes this comes in atp paper and you have to write down this paper in four or five lines so you should uh, not just uh, read it from the textbook and uh, try to master this concept of writing this whole experiment in four or five lines okay so i i hope that you have understood the idea read these lines the lines which are written here so you can write it in an academic uh, language okay so i hope that you have understood this experiment okay so you know the iron is uh, uh, is a soft magnetic material and soft magnetic material means that it can easily be converted into a magnet and it will very easily lose this uh, magnetism so iron is a soft magnetic material and you know the soft magnetic materials and uh, they have a very important use we use them for the magnetic shielding and we will learn in the in your in, in in the next slides that what is the magnetic shielding okay so the uses of the magnets um, uh, we will uh, the use of the temporary magnets wherever we use the soft magnetic materials is in the electric electric electromagnets we use them uh, we have lot of their uses and we will study about them in the in the next lecture not in this lecture there is a reason that why i am delaying this concept of the the relays and electric bells and circuit breakers and video tapes and the loudspeaker we will learn about them in my next lecture so okay steel uh, is a permanent magnet so that if you make magnets from the steel they will be permanent magnets steel is a hard magnetic material remember this these words and hard magnetic material means that it's a difficult to convert it into magnet it's, it's difficult to magnetize it it takes time and once it is converted into magnet and then it becomes a very good magnet and it retain its magnetic property for a longer time and so we make uh, permanent magnets with the help of this uh, with by using the material steel and the uses of the permanent magnets we will study in my next lecture not in this lecture okay so the difference between magnetic properties of iron and steel can be the summarized at the end of this uh, lecture i will also give you a, a brief uh, uh, i will brief you describe you uh, some experiments in which we will show that the iron is a a soft magnetic material and steel is a hard magnetic material so this table shows that uh, how this uh, how they are differentiate from each other for example the iron is a soft magnetic material steel is a hard magnetic material magnetization iron very easily magnetized steel is difficult to magnetize demagnetization iron is easily demagnetized but steel is difficult to magnetize magnetic field strength in the solenoid the if you put iron in the solenoid it will make the solenoid very strong electromagnet but steel will not make it very strong electromagnet magnetism in the iron is temporary and magnetism in the steel is permanent okay so here we have another slide and in this slide i will try to show you that how the iron differs from steel so okay so i'm back again so iron is a soft magnetic material i will try to show by this experiment here we have a bar magnet a permanent magnet and there is a piece of iron when they are in contact this iron will also be behaving like a a bar magnet it will be also behaving like a magnet so it has uh, these paper clips they are attached with this iron piece because this iron has its south pole here and north pole here so this iron is also behaving like a magnet and these paper clips they are attracted to this and they are attached with this iron piece because this iron has a magnetism on it it has uh, induced magnetism so what you do you remove this permanent magnet 
when you will remove this permanent magnet this iron piece will lose its magnetism immediately so what will happen all the paper clips will fall on the earth when all the paper clips will fall on the earth this shows that iron has immediately lost its all magnetism so this shows that iron is a soft magnetic material you see when you break the contact between the iron and the permanent magnet and you remove it iron, this permanent magnet this iron loses its magnetism immediately so iron is a and the evidence is the fall of this all the paper clips on the ground so this iron iron is a soft magnetic material it do not retain its magnetic properties so it loses its magnetism as you remove this immediately this iron will lose its magnetism so iron is a soft magnetic material here we have um, i have a piece of steel and this is in contact with this permanent magnet and you can see there are paper clips attached with this steel then you will remove this permanent magnet and the steel will be on its own you will observe some of the paper clips will fall on the ground but some of the paper clips will be still attached with the steel there is no permanent magnet here now but these paper clips they are still attached with the steel this shows that the steel is still retaining its magnetic properties the steel not lost its magnetic properties immediately this means that the steel retains its magnetic properties for a very long time that's why we say that the steel is a hard magnetic material so steel is a hard magnetic material i hope that you have understood this idea here i i want to introduce to you to another idea that if you take a piece a rod of iron and you bring it near this north pole so what will happen this iron rod the magnetic lines which are coming out of this north they will start traveling in this magnetic rod so this iron rod and from here they will go out and they will go to this south and the north the magnetic lines which are coming out of this north of the permanent magnet they will travel in the rod in this way and they will go back to the south here so you see what will happen the all the magnetic lines they will start traveling in the iron rod and from here they will exit so here a south pole will be created on this side the north pole is created on this side a north pole is created the the most important thing which you should understand is that no magnetic field lines will come in this area so this area will become free of magnetic lines you see all the magnetic lines they travel in the magnetic uh, in this iron rod and from here they exit and they go back to this south so this area here this area becomes free of magnetic line no magnetic lines will be reaching this area because this iron rod has concentrated all the magnetic field lines in itself and from its ends the magnetic lines will exit and they will not come in this area they will go to this south so this area here this becomes free of the magnetic field lines so here i am doing an experiment remember that slide which i have just explained to you here we have this is a wooden a wooden a wooden uh, you can see a rod a box and here i have a slit in okay so here i have placed a permanent magnet and because the magnetic lines they can cross the wooden box and they can cross this air and again this wooden box and they are reaching on this side of the this bottom of the wooden box and because the magnetic lines are reaching here that's why you can see the because the magnet here the paper clips are attached to the bottom of this wooden box so this shows that the magnetic lines are reaching they are able to cross this wooden box and reach here and that's why these paper clips are attached to the bottom of this wooden box now what you do you take an ice cream strip ice cream stick ice cream stick is made of also made of wood and you insert that ice cream uh, stick here in this slit so what i have done i have inserted ice cream stick which is made of the wood and still you will see that the paper clips are still attached to the bottom 
of this uh, wooden or paper box which shows that the this wooden stick is not able to stop these magnetic lines so magnetic lines are still reaching here and you because they are reaching here the, the evidence is that these these paper clips they are still attached with the bottom of this cardboard box or you can say wooden box so the paper the magnetic lines they travel through the uh, ice cream stick ice cream stick cannot change the direction of the magnetic field lines okay move to the next one here the same experiment but now this time what i did i inserted an iron rod in this slit i have inserted an iron rod so what will happen the magnetic lines which are coming out of this knot they will travel in the iron rod and from here they will exit and they go back to this the magnetic lines which are coming out of this knot they will travel and they will exit from here and they will go to the socket but no magnetic lines will be able to reach in this area so this area will become free of the magnetic lines when this area will become free of the magnetic lines no magnetic lines will be coming in this area so these paper clips because now no magnetic lines are reaching them so all these paper clips will fall on the ground this shows that the iron rod has has uh, redirected the magnetic lines so iron rod is um, stopping the magnetic lines from reaching to the bottom here and this is called magnetic shielding so by magnetic shielding by using the iron we can create areas where there will be no magnetic lines so that's a very useful idea and we will discuss in detail in our next lecture so um by this uh, i have reached the end of this chapter uh, please read this chapter from your textbook also i have tried to explain you and we will after the in my next video we will go to the next chapter of the magnetism that's electromagnetism and um, in which uh, we will study uh, direction of the electric field and the effect of the uh, magnets on a current carrying conductor so thank you very much everybody have a good day and please read this chapter from your textbook also and when you are watching these videos also write down notes in your books in your note uh, notebooks and read your textbook is very important to read the textbook okay thank you very much have a good day god bless you all thank you very much